Hey, it's Kois, and if I didn't know any better, I would think that these peas, or this corn right here, or any of this other produce, this yellow squash, zucchini, are all naturally grown and real. But no. You'd be surprised how much of this is actually GMO. And I bet a lot of these people have no idea. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is Kois Martin here, and I am going to show you how to make some GMO food. So, obviously that stands for great, magnificent, and outstanding. Um, first off, I'd like to talk to you about corn. Corn is one of the highest genetically modified products, uh, along with soy. Uh, we're going to give it a little blister. Today we're making sirloin steak with a blistered corn salsa and some sautéed zucchini. Uh, of course, I'm using GMO tomatoes, GMO zucchini, GMO corn. I'm using grain-fed steak and corn-fed steak so that my steak is also a GMO product. Give this a light little blister. Now, the big topic is whether or not GMO should be labeled. Um, is an interesting question, I think, because I think people should have some general idea of what they are eating. Um, I mean, for me, I have to sort of know that my products are GMO because, you know, people tend to ask about those sort of things when you're cooking. But, um, you know, I came up with an acronym for GMO um, that sort of gives my reasoning about why they should be labeled. Um, so the G is for general knowledge. I think people should be able to know what they're eating. The, uh, the M is just general morality. You know, I think it's important that we allow people to have the opportunity to choose what they're eating. Um, and then the O would be opportunities. I think labeling food will offer um, job opportunities. And that is obviously always a good thing. So I think generally labeling GMOs is the way to go. Um, but at the same time, they're not bad. As you can see, I'm using a variety of genetically modified products today, so it's not like they're gonna kill you. I mean, my tomatoes might not be genetically modified now, but they're going to be pretty soon with um, the genes of a fish. And um, yeah, so this is gonna be for a nice little um, zucchini saute. So about 20% of our green squash in the U.S. are genetically modified. About 85% of our corn is genetically modified. Um, currently, not a lot of our tomatoes are GMO because they haven't um, started doing the GMO tomato situation quite yet, but it's coming. Um, so yeah, let's assemble this salsa. So we have some tomato, we have my corn, we're going with the corn, some red onion, a little bit of cilantro, jalapeno, all GMO. Well, not all of it. The cilantro is not GMO. And neither are the onions, but most of this stuff is genetically modified in some way. Um, but something else to touch on is that if we're going to label stuff and people are claiming that GMOs aren't bad, then labeling it shouldn't really be a problem. Because if it's not going to hurt you, then putting it out there for everybody to know isn't necessarily going to cause any harm, I would assume. Um, I think my corn-fed steak should be done by now. And yes, I did choose corn-fed on purpose. Looks nice. All right. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to assemble everything right after I saute, and then I'll uh, I'll show you the finished product after. All right, everything is done. We're gonna just go ahead and finish off our nice little GMO dish. So our sauteed zucchini. We'll top it off with some of our beautifully cooked steak. Just do that. And then we'll do some salsa. Now, something to keep in mind. England already has some labeling laws. New Zealand and Australia both promote um, 
They both promote grass-fed and non-GMO product. Um, and so I think that overall, labeling is going to be the best bet for us so that everybody has a good idea of what they're actually buying because there's literally so many products that are GMO. Peas, sugar beets, corn, canola, cotton, um, tomatoes, there's so many. So I think labeling is the best bet for everybody.